My name is Priya Raja Sathupathi, and I'm an MD-PhD student in the lab. So I'm in the third year in the program and first year in my PhD. I grew up in upstate New York in a town, a small town called Brockport, 20 miles west of Rochester. I wouldn't say I was really interested in science as a youngster. I had a lot of just, I was very socially involved. I think I was just, up until high school, I was just, I was athletic. I uh, was very involved in the community. Um, but I think academics was always stressed in my, in my house. And uh, my dad always had, you know, very interesting discussions at home about why things are the way they are, culturally, socially, but as well as physical phenomenon around us. And I think that was always kind of there. But I don't think I uh, necessarily felt that I would tap into science, especially basic science or especially a PhD. In high school, I really was fascinated by human biology, and I had great teachers. I think that's what it was, teachers that were really able to explain things in a way that I thought was fascinating. Uh, and then when I went to college, I had a mentor, George Hess, who I owe a lot to. I spent three years in his lab, all three years at Cornell. He was the one, he sent me to India. I had done my undergraduate at Cornell, and I took a year off and I went to India. And I came back, and I did a lot of theoretical work. And I hadn't done very much experimental work at all before I came here. But the theory got me thinking a lot about how memory storage could happen in the first place in the brain. And you, you think about computers, and you think of a place. When you think of memory, you think of a place where things are stored. And that's not necessarily how our brain is. It's very dynamic. And memory is actually a very dynamic process in our brain. And so I came in with a couple ideas of how RNAs, and particularly microRNAs, which is a really a fascinating developing field, could be able to localize activity at the synapse. And so this was one among a couple ideas which seemed like it could fit into the context of what the lab was working on, but was also a little bit different enough that perhaps he was interested in kind of seeing where it goes. So tell them about microRNA because they think that's the key to the mind. I think that's the great thing about Eric. He's so, he's very empowering, particularly so for females. Maybe it, it feel, it's, it's, it's a great thing to work with him because I think more than anything else, what, what I get from Eric is his confidence in me. He says, go for it, give it a shot. And also having his guidance, he's there along the way to say, you know what, maybe that's, that's not so great and maybe you should kind of like go this way. He's always there, but at the same time, you feel like it's yours, you really own the ideas and, the, and the, uh, the, the way you explore and take your project. I do tend to think step by step. And it would be something I would tell others too that has really helped me, other, other students perhaps. If someone were to tell me now, look, your, your PhD thesis is, is about understanding memory and, and the dynamic nature of the brain, I couldn't, have, I couldn't have ever leapt to that step. But to work at it one step at a time, I think has been the best uh, blessing for me, is to know that I can get to the next step. I had a great set of teachers in high school, a great set of mentors in college, and to say, look, I want to join this lab, just try a few things out. I want to work here. I went to India, did, did, some, did some things. And every step has really helped me say, look, I can get, right now, I can't imagine being a professor at a university uh, having a lab. And potentially that's where this is heading. But I cannot imagine it. I really cannot imagine it. But I can only say, I love what I'm doing right now. And maybe the next step I can tackle.